It is stinking hot and today we're at Lang Lang where Holden's Proving Ground is and we're going to check out the new Commodore which is the first one to not be built in Australia. Now I'm a Commodore fan so before you go leaving any down votes or negative comments, today you're going to get a no BS look at the next generation Commodore. The all new German built Commodore range kicks off from 33,690 with a front wheel drive two litre lift back that sips just 7.4 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres. The Commodore wagon starts from 35,890 and is available in petrol and diesel with a higher riding tour reversion featuring Holden's meaty V6 engine and all wheel drive from 45,990. Performance lovers will head directly towards the sporty VXR, which is priced from 55990 and features a naturally aspirated 3.6 litre V6 and all-wheel drive, using just 9.3 litres per 100 kilometres. What about boot space? Well, there's no shortage in the wagon. In addition to the power tailgate, you can also open it by foot, but instead of just kicking aimlessly, there's an LED light on that comes on the ground, and you just whack your foot under there and... Bob's your uncle. In here, 793 litres from the boot floor to the boot roof. That is incredible stuff. And then it expands to over 1,600 litres when you drop those rear seats. This is a very generously sized boot. If a wagon isn't your style, you've got the lift back option. So you press the Holden symbol to open it. That is a pretty good space. So 552 litres from the boot floor to the boot roof. And that expands to 1,450 when you drop the second row. Now it's a versatile space because if you can imagine something big going in here and it was a sedan, you'd struggle to sort of get it in through this lip. Whereas now you've got this giant opening. You just slide stuff in, close the boot and away you go. Inside the cabin, there's plenty of leg, knee and headroom, plus creature comforts that include rear air vents and a centre armrest. Some models also feature heading for the second row. It certainly doesn't feel too much smaller than a VF Commodore in here. The infotainment offering across the range is excellent with seven and eight inch MyLink infotainment systems that feature Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and DAB Plus digital radio, along with wireless smartphone charging. At the entry level, you're going to be driving this engine here. It's the 2.0-litre four-cylinder petrol. Now, I know, 2.0-litre in a Commodore. Sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? But it makes 191 kilowatts of power and 350 newton metres of torque. And it's driven by a nine-speed automatic gearbox. It's a pretty smooth setup, good steering feedback, and the ride and handling has been tuned for Australia. That means that it is one of the few cars in this segment that actually has a custom tune for this country. Now, what does that two litre mean in real world scenarios? Well, let's give it a crack. I'm going to come to a stop here and then I'm going to pin the throttle to 100 k's an hour. We'll see what happens. I'll load it up a little bit, punch it there. A little lag, it'll wind up. Once it's moving, it's all right. 60, 70, 80, 90, and there's 100. That is seriously quick. That is seriously quick. Very impressed with that. So the move to front wheel drive may scare some people, scare them into thinking that this doesn't handle anymore. Well, I've got a slalom set up here. I'm gonna throw it through here to see what happens. So I'll give it a punch. All right. All right you can feel it sliding a little at the front there, but that is still pretty composed. So we've got to keep in mind that this is a big car and that is a slalom and it's done that fairly well. So it hasn't lost any of that composure you'd expect from a big Commodore. I've been really surprised with this entry level two litre Commodore. It's, it's just different, but not different in a bad way. It still motors along nicely, has plenty of torque and it's good fun to drive. But it is worth keeping in mind that if you do buy this two litre, you're gonna have to put 95 Ron fuel in, which means you need premium unleaded. And Holden does offer a two litre diesel as well, which we haven't had the chance to test today. While the liftback replaces the traditional sedan shape, it's the wagon that's likely to win buyers over. Big cargo space is matched with versatility and European styling. Sitting 18 mil higher than the regular wagon, the Tourist straddles the line between wagon and SUV. The VXR picks up 20 inch alloy wheels and Brembo brakes up front, along with a boot lid spoiler and low profile tyres. It's easy to spot this one in open traffic. 
So I'm no style expert, I'm sure you can tell, but I do love the look of this wagon. The liftback doesn't really do anything for me, but the wagon here in Calais V Tourist spec is bloody good. It sits 20 mil higher off the ground, and this one here is powered by a naturally aspirated V6, a 3.6 litre, makes 235 kilowatts of power and 381 newton metres of torque. And this also uses a nine speed automatic gearbox, also gets paddle shifters as well. It's a really good engine. You kick it in any gear and it just gets up and moves. And then you get the surety of all wheel drive as well. And check out this interior. This is bloody nice. You've got a big panoramic glass roof. In front of me here, I have a Speedo cluster that's digital. I also have a great heads up display and the eight inch MyLink infotainment system that has inbuilt nav, all the smartphone features we mentioned. Plus it also has a good voice recognition system. And on a sweltering hot day like this, we have massage seats and seat cooling. Now, what about towing? Well, you'd be pleased to hear that the wagon and the lift back, if you get it with a V6, will tow 2,100 kilos brakes. That number will sound familiar because it's what the last Commodore towed, even in V8 trim. If you do step down to the four cylinder petrol or diesel, you'll only do 1,800 kilos. So it's pleasing to hear that it'll match the previous gen Commodore for towing, but keep in mind that you don't get that added punch that you would if you had, let's say, an SS Commodore. Okay, picture this, you've got the family in the car, we are heading to our favourite camping site and you get to a 25% grade hill and you accidentally drop half the car into some muddy stuff or some stuff with less traction. Well, you're in trouble if you're in a rear wheel drive car or even a front wheel drive car, but here with the Tura you get a Twinster all wheel drive system and all we do is hit the throttle and it hooks up nicely. Look at that, if we're in a front wheel drive car or in a rear wheel drive car, we would not be going anywhere. Now this is more like it. This is the Commodore VXR. It is the sporty model in the Commodore range. And while it does get the same V6 as the other V6 Commodores, you get a VXR button. Hit that, the adaptive dampers start working and the ride becomes much firmer. But what that means is that the Twinster all-wheel drive system begins working more aggressively. Which means you turn it in, punch the throttle and this thing holds on like no other Commodore before it. Now the Twinster all-wheel drive system may sound familiar and that's because it's fitted to the Ford Focus RS. It means that it gets a mechanical torque vectoring system and that comes in handy when you find yourself at our slalom. So we come to a stop, I'm going to bury the throttle here, it gets up to speed, we find our first cone. I'm able to just keep the throttle in there and it sorts that torque out and it means that you're able to essentially just keep it flat while you're turning, which you definitely cannot do in the front wheel drive car and you definitely couldn't do with the previous gen rear drive Commodore. Okay, so we know that this thing is good through the corners and it can handle itself, but what about in a straight line? This is where it really struggles and it just has nothing on the SS and you can best illustrate this when you come to a complete stop and I'm gonna nail it here to 100 k's an hour. So here we go. Turn the AC off, it is 40 degrees outside, but foot down on the brake, foot on the throttle and let go of the brake. Here we go, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. That's seven seconds. An SS would have absolutely left this thing for dead. So when you do switch out of VXR mode and you just want to be comfortable, this thing really fits the bill. The ride is fantastic, despite the fact this thing is on 20 inch wheels. These seats are so comfy. They hug you like a big hug. They really are nice. And they also come with a massage function as well. This thing's loaded with tech. Up ahead of me, I have a heads up display that gives me a taco. So it is a very cool and versatile environment. So if you do want a bit of a sleeper in the sense that you need it to be comfortable during the week and then fun on weekends, the VXR definitely fits the bill. So I said before that I love the Aussie built Commodore and the Commodore name means a lot to me. This car thankfully lives up to it. So it gets my tick of approval, has plenty of room inside, it's loaded with tech and it handles better than Commodore has ever handled before. Yes, I miss the V8 engine noise and that kick in the back and it now lives in a very different segment to where it used to. But we're looking forward to putting it up against its new competitors to see exactly how it fares. But in the interim, head to caradvice.com to see the latest Commodore news.